Hey, this is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. On behalf of AccuTools, I'd like to do a little bit of a presentation today on vacuum and the basics of evacuation and really answer some questions about why products like True Blue. I think there's uh, some, some mystery on there why we'd want to do that. Evacuation principles and processes is where I want to start, and there's really three knowledge plateaus we want to talk about, the things which some of us know something. You know, we talk about like things we might have learned in high school or grade school. We think we know a little bit about the earth and vacuum. Uh, things of which some of us know a lot. You know, we've been, some of us have been doing this for 20 years and we think, wow, I've been doing evacuation for so long, how could anybody teach me anything? And then there's the things which none of us know enough. And that's really, that's really what this whole book is about. This re review of vacuum for service engineers is literally written back in the 1960s. And I, I think it's interesting, uh, a guy I know, Dan Houlihan, uh, coined the phrase, the dead men. And uh, it's really the, the long gone authors that taught us a lot about the lost arts. And evacuation really is one of those lost arts. We just l forgot how to do it as an industry out there. So we're going to start with the basics of vacuum, vacuum 101. And here's probably one of the biggest myths I want to dispel is vacuum pumps uh, don't suck, right? Now, when you think about this, uh, I got really uh, confused on this you know, a few years ago. I was actually surfing through some videos and ran across one of people that thought, uh, you know, believed in flat earth theory. And one of the things they talked about was how the, the vacuum in space was so deep that it was going to suck away our atmosphere or pulled our atmosphere up towards space. And it really, I should have thought about it early on because I've been teaching the high school programs for so long, but it just, I didn't, it didn't click with me at first. But pressure always pushes one direction, and that's from high to low, right? It always pushes from high to low. Pressure only flows in one direction, okay? Vacuum pumps just create that area of low pressure for, to flow into. Pressure rushes into that area of reduced pressure. So when we're talking about evacuating a coil or evacuating anything else, the vacuum pump is actually creating a, an, an area of low pressure, and then the, the pressure that's in that coil gets pushed into our vacuum pump just like air gets pushed into a vacuum cleaner. We think about, you know, we're vacuuming a floor out there. The vacuum cleaner creates an area of low pressure, and then the atmosphere that's at the carpet pushes in. So we're actually pushing the dirt into the vacuum cleaner. We're not pulling it inside. Pressure always travels again from high to low. Here's another important thing to understand is when the pressure difference becomes too low, the pressure flow will stop. And that's a really important concept to understand. Now, vacuum is just empty space, and we're talking about, you know, our upper atmosphere, uh, about 56 miles up. We have the deepest vacuum that we can, uh, that a deeper vacuum in space, 56 miles up, than we can ever achieve at, uh, at sea level, all right? Now, if you think about, we said earlier, pressure only goes from high to low, so how does this work? Well, the Earth is heated by the sun. The sun is the only new energy that we ever get, and that is superheating gases at the earth level and that's what's creating our atmosphere and then that atmosphere is simply pushing the pressure generated down here is pushing up into space so about half the weight of our total atmosphere is about 3.75 miles up and about three quarters of the weight a quarter plus half is seven miles up and beyond that it gets almost uh you know really really deep vacuums at that point point. and gravity pulls the gases uh, back down towards earth but the pressure is pushing up so at this point, we have our highest pressure down here where, it's the, where the uh, gases are being generated. They're pushing up into space. The Earth's gravity is pulling back down, and it's just as high as we can push against the gravitational forces of Earth, right? That's all it is. At 60 miles up, the pressure becomes so low that there's no force left to push it into space. Atmospheric pressure versus vacuum. This is what we call the first plateau of knowledge. And here's the key things to understand. Vacuum is any pressure lower than atmospheric pressure. That's, that's all it is. It's just whenever we're talking about going into a vacuum, it's any pressure lower than atmospheric pressure. You might hear words like deep vacuum. Well, there's no such thing as a deep vacuum. It's just a relative to the atmospheric pressure. So it's, vacuum is vacuum at the end of the day. Nature can create a higher vacuum than we can ever get attained by man. If the state of vacuum is also uh, that of low absolute pressure. So you're going to hear all these different terms. And vacuum is always measured in units of absolute pressure. So zero PSIA, that's a, a perfect vacuum. That means all the atmosphere has been removed. Negative uh, 14.696 PSIG. Now what we're talking about is uh, against a relative pressure, right? Zero, zero PSI relative. Um, that we would have negative 14.696 PSIG. That's again, down at a perfect vacuum. 
or 29.996 inches of mercury or zero microns of mercury. All these are just different ways that we describe uh, a perfect vacuum. In practice, though, we can only achieve a partial vacuum. We can never achieve as deep of a vacuum as we can in space. We cannot remove all the molecules. An evacuation is simply the removal of the free air. That's all we're doing. We're just taking the free air away. That's uh, oxygen, nitrogen, other gases, and also the water vapor that's attached. By definition, going back to the, uh, to the uh, Vacuum for Service Engineers book, our work becomes involved with air leaking into a system. We refer to this as free air. And that's the unconfined atmosphere which we freely breathe in contrast to compressed air which is mechanically compressed, right? So it's just the air in this room is free air. Gases have molecular activity. Now, this one's an interesting and probably a really hard concept for some people to understand, but hopefully I'll get it explained to you here. If I have a 100 cubic foot tank of water and I have a pump that pumps 10 gallons per minute or 10, 10, excuse me, 10 cubic feet per minute, in 10 minutes, we'll have emptied all the water out of that tank, right? 10 times 10 is 100. We run it for 10 minutes, it's gonna drain all the water out of the tank. Well, atmosphere is completely different. If we have 100 uh, cubic feet of gas and we exhaust at a rate of 10 CFM, whether we pump for a, a month, a week, a year, or a minute, there's still 100 cubic foot of gas left in the tank. It's just fewer molecules. We can never empty all the atmosphere out of that tank. There's fewer and fewer molecules, so there's a lower pressure, and then it's in a direct proportion of the molecules removed. The remaining molecules will occupy the entire space, and that's what builds up a vapor pressure. So we isolate a system, we'll talk about this later, we'll see this gradual buildup of pressure. That gradual buildup of pressure is just the pressure created by the, by the molecules that are left. No matter how long we evacuate that, we cannot pull all the atmosphere out of that tank. Vacuum is also a really poor conductor of heat. Gases, um, as the molecules are removed, there's fewer and fewer molecules left to bump into each other, and this is the reason vacuum is used for insulation of a thermos, right? And if you look at a thermos, what we have here is we have these vacuum chambers around us. So it's, it's glass, typically, and then we have vacuum uh, in between that glass. And then also you have this like silver paint on the inside of this, and that silver is used uh, to also block radiation. So what we've got here is a vacuum does not allow conduction or convection, and then the, then the silver blocks the radiation in there. So we actually block by all three. Conduction is molecule to molecule where it's actually touching and transferring by touching. Convection means transfer by the air. We've eliminated that. And then radiation. And that's actually also the way that these thermistor vacuum gauges work here. So what we've got here is this is a, a thermistor. And if we were to look at this, this is a vacuum gauge. What we're talking about is uh, the, the sensor's literally inside the silver tip right here, okay? So that is magnified under a, magna, under a microscope so we can see it and see the uh, size of the sensor. But that's literally mounted inside here. So that's how small that really is. This little black dot here is about the size of a grain of pepper on there. And this little black dot is the thermistor and it gets up to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And what happens here is as this is heated up, heat travels by radiation, conduction, and convection away from this thermistor to the outside walls of that uh, connector on there, the aluminum port we connect to. And the rate of heat transfer is affected by the a number of molecules, the amount of gas around that sensor. So as we have a lot of gas around here, we're going to have a lot of heat transfer. And we've got to put a lot more current through this thermistor in order to uh, keep it at 300 degrees. As the, the, the gas molecules are removed, we have fewer and fewer of them in there. The heat transfer goes down, and now it takes less current to keep that thermistor at the same temperature. And that's all that how a vacuum gauge works. It's really quite a simple thing when you look at it at the end of the day. So how does a vacuum pump pump? Well, gases are always seeking equilibrium, and the vacuum pump simply acts like a trap for the gas molecules to flow into. Let's start a little video here. We'll let it run as we go here. But the pump creates an area of low pressure at the inlet for gases to flow into. And this will start here in a second. So the gases are traveling down inside the pump. It's swinging around, grabbing those gases, compressing them up, and exhausting them through the oil. Now, this gray level here is oil in your vacuum pump. And that's when we exhaust it out here, a small amount of that moisture also gets trapped in the oil. And that's why your oil might turn a milky color. But this is just sweeping away the molecules and creating that area of low pressure for the uh, gases to flow into. When this pump can no longer pull, in other words, when the, this, this seal right here on the edge is an oil seal, and when that oil uh, reaches its ultimate vapor pressure, the pump can no longer uh, pump any deeper, we, we've reached a state of equilibrium, right? And that's typically around the 10 to 25 microns for a decent pump. 
Uh, this one here I have on the table here, this Navac pump's rated at five microns, so it'll pull down a little bit uh, lower with the right oil in it. So the hose is just simply an extension of the vessel being evacuated, and this is really why it's so important. Remember, the vacuum pump's sweeping away, creating air, the area of low pressure, and now the pressure inside this vessel is pushing up through the hose and into the tank. So the larger the hose is, the less pressure we have dropped due to friction we have in there. And the lower the pressure goes, obviously, the slower that the equilibrium takes place. The larger connections allow for faster equilibrium simply due to the lower resistance of flow. So we want these large and short because this, as it extends out here, it's just going to slow those gas molecules down as it goes through them. All right, so now let's get into what the lost art of vacuum really is. Now we've gone through the little bit of primer, and, uh, and we'll get you started on the next video.